Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on the parts of algebraic expressions and a little bit of an introduction into something called the distributive property. So the first part of this video is just a ton of vocabulary that you're going to hear your teachers using a lot going forward. Starting with algebraic expression. An algebraic expression is a math sentence, which means expression, that has numbers, operations, and most importantly, variables. What's a variable, you might ask? Great question. A variable is a symbol that's used to represent a number or value. Now, most commonly, you're going to see the symbols X and Y. But later on in math, you actually get into Greek symbols like theta to represent unknown values. Terms are the parts of an expression that are separated by those addition and subtraction signs. So here's an example of two different algebraic expressions, 3x plus 6 and 4x squared minus 2x plus 5. We're going to spend time going over each of these and highlighting the important vocabulary and parts in each expression. Starting with 3x plus 6, the first thing I like to do is figure out how many terms are in the expression. Remember, terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. So I notice that there's only one addition symbol here, meaning there are two terms in this expression. 3x is a term and 6 is a term. Now, let's take a closer look at each individual term. The first term here, 3x, that is called a variable term. And you can probably guess why. It's the term that has the variable in it. Now, in this variable term, there are two parts, the 3 and the x. The x here is the variable. It's the only part of this expression that isn't a number or an operation. We don't know what x is. x could stand for anything. The other part of the variable term is the 3. The 3 being attached to the variable is called the coefficient. Now, what about our second term in this expression, 6? 6 is just an integer, but in an algebraic expression, we have a more specific name for that. 6 is called the constant term. And that word constant means not attached to a variable. So all in all, this expression has two terms. The first term is a variable term 3x, the coefficient of 3, and the variable x. The second term is a constant, and that constant is 6. We're going to start this second example the same way. How many terms are in this expression? Hmm. I count 1, 2, 3. This expression has three terms. And we're going to go in and look at each term from left to right, starting with 4x squared. Since this term has a variable in it, we would call this a variable term. What's the variable? x squared. What else is part of that first term? That's right, the 4. And the 4 is called the coefficient. Moving on to our next term, I notice that this term is 2x meaning this is yet again another variable term. What's the variable here? Unlike the first term, our variable is just x. And what do we call that 2 that's attached to x? That's right, the coefficient. Our last term is 5. 5 is just an integer. It's not going to change or be affected by x. We call this the constant term. So now that we've seen some examples, I'm going to let you try to do numbers one and number two on your own. The questions are, first, how many terms and what are they? Second, what are the coefficients that you see? And third, what are some of the constants that you see? Try this on your own first. We'll go over it together. First of all, I notice that number one has two terms, and they are 5x and 13. 5 is the coefficient and the only coefficient in this expression. So then what's the constant? It's the number standing all on its own, 13. 
In our second expression, there are three terms, 2x squared, x, and 3. In our first variable term, 2 is attached to x squared, meaning 2 is a coefficient. Ooh, but what's the coefficient of x? Some students think it would be 0, but careful, 0 times x would be 0. That term wouldn't even exist. When you have a variable by itself, we call this a hidden one. Because how many x's do you see? Just one x. So we can actually add that one into our expression if we want to, to make our lives a little easier. What does that leave for our constant? The number without the variable, three. What do you do if a constant is trapped? If you look here in example one and example two, it looks like the constant is by itself, but it's trapped inside of a group. There is a property in math that allows us to do this. It's called the distributive property. And the distributive property basically states you can multiply all the terms inside of a group by the coefficient outside of the group. So our coefficient here is three. So we're gonna multiply both of the terms inside of the group by three. Three times x plus three times five. Notice the structure inside of the group is maintained, meaning if addition is happening inside of the group, addition is going to happen outside of the group. Three times x is simply three x plus three times five is 15. Now that our constant is free, we can go in and label the parts of this expression. Three here, since it's attached to my variable, is my coefficient, and my constant, which originally was five, has now become 15 since I multiplied it by three. Why don't you try example two on your own? Free the constant by applying the distributive property. So now that my constant is free, we can label the parts of this expression. Eight is my new coefficient because it is attached to the variable. And 20 is my new constant because I multiplied that five by four. All right, our last examples here. The directions are first, free the constant by applying that distributive property. Then identify the terms, coefficients, and constants in your leftover expression. I'm gonna let you try these two on your own and then we'll go over them together. So now that I have my new expression, how many terms are there? I count two. There are two terms in this expression and they are 18x and six. All right, what's our coefficient? What's attached to our variable? You got it, 18. And what's our constant standing all on its own with no variable? Our six. Now I wouldn't be surprised if you struggled a little bit with number two because now we're distributing a fraction. Ugh, that's where things get really tough, right? Not so fast. If you recall, a fraction is just a mixture of multiplication and division. So really, by multiplying by one half, we're saying we're multiplying each of these terms by one, which doesn't do anything, and dividing by two. So when you see something like this, distributing a fraction, I want you to think about distributing the concept of division. Here's how you can write it out. I'm essentially going to divide each of these terms by two. Eight x squared divided by two, that would be four x squared. Plus four x divided by two would be two x. Minus two divided by two is one. Notice how there were three terms inside the group to start, and there are three terms outside of the group after applying the distributive property, which means our structure was maintained. I count one, two, three terms total. They are 4x squared 
2x and 1. That means our coefficients here are 4 and 2. And finally, our constant at the end is 1. And that's it for today's lesson on the parts of algebraic expressions and distributive properties. I'll see you next time. Thank you.